What if I told you there is an AI system that is so efficient that it could theoretically pull in over $560,000 in daily revenue while only spending $87,000 on GPU costs. That's a staggering 545% profit margin. And this is exactly the numbers of DeepSeq V3 or DeepSeq R1's inference system. We'll talk about how it processes billions of tokens every day, how it overlaps communication and computation to avoid wasting GPU cycles and how it balances load. By the end of this video, you will exactly see why DeepSeq R1 is considered a masterclass in large scale AI serving or inference. Let us first address the elephant in the room. How does DeepSeq R1 arrive at a theoretical 562,000 in daily revenue. According to their own stats, these are the three different rates that you should keep in mind. Let us keep for a moment that the exact same theoretical rate of their API. So you have got a 14 cents per million input token with cash hitting, 55 cents per million input token cash missing and $2.19 per million output token. So now if you calculate this for a 24 hour period, it could be $562,000. Meanwhile, the actual cost of running their GPUs is just $87,000 per day. And that is a staggering 545% margin. How are they managing to run this entire operation at $87,000 per day? Main thing is you need to understand that DeepSeek's model is not a dense transformer model. It's a mixture of expert model. In an MOE model, you don't have just one set of parameters shared across all the tokens. Instead, you have multiple experts, for example, 256 experts per layer. That means for each token, the model chooses a small subset. So every time there is a token that is coming into the model, the model would randomly choose eight. And what is it doing here? It is one enabling sparsity. Only a fraction of experts are used at one time which can lead to more specialized efficient computation and two scalability. If you can distribute experts across multiple GPUs or nodes, you can serve more tokens simultaneously. Now the biggest catch here is that if you have got 256 experts and only eight are used per token, you need a really large enough batch. So each expert is consistently busy. Otherwise you waste GPU potential and that is exactly where DeepSeq has nailed a new technique called EP. EP here stands for expert parallelism. In cross node expert parallelism, you spread these experts not just across multiple GPUs in one server, but across multiple servers altogether. That is exactly why it's called cross node expert parallelism. Each GPU holds only a subset of experts. This solves two problems. One is batch size scaling with more experts distributed across GPUs. You can handle a massive number of tokens parallelly. And then second thing is a reduced latency. Each GPU only processes a smaller chunk of the overall model. So individual computations can be faster. You're spreading across multiple GPUs. You need to make sure that, you know, all the information come back to you so that you can have reduced latency. So DeepSeq R1 uses different EP configurations for two different phases of inference. So within inference, they have got two different phase. One is what they call as pre-filling, reading the user input token in bulk. The second one is what they call as decoding, generating output tokens one by one or in small batches. So whenever you send a question to DeepSeek's chat, first thing that they're doing is pre-filling and second thing that they're going to do is decoding. So this separation is very important because these two phases, have different computational patterns and different parallel needs. Now, the most important thing that you have to keep in mind is because you have got multiple nodes, multiple servers, multiple GPUs, how do you handle the communication overhead? And this could be a hidden bottleneck. And this is a major challenge when any, any cross node setup, because network communication is something that they have to solve. If each token representation has to hop across multiple nodes to just find the right experts, now you risk the GPUs being idle while they wait for data. DeepSeq R1 addresses this through computation communication overlap. There are two important things happening at two different stage. We already know the two different stage. One is the pre-filling, the second one is the decoding stage. At a pre-filling stage, what they do is something called as a dual micro batching. They split each batch of the tokens into two micro batches. A is computing 
micro batch B is communicating, sending or receiving data. So this approach keeps the GPUs busy constantly. Now in the second stage, the decoding stage, they've got a five stage pipeline so that some part of the system is always computing while another part is communicating. So this ensures that GPUs are rarely waiting around. If you are going to keep all the GPU busy, how are you going to handle load balancing? So DeepSeq R1 solves this with three main load balancer. The first one is what they call as a pre-fill load balancer. So this one balances the core attention computation. So no single GPU is stuck with the biggest prompt. Now comes to the decode load balancer. Decode load balancer balances the KV, key value cache usage. Some users have extremely long context which can bog down a GPU if not managed. So it balances the request count so that no single GPU handles too many active decoding sessions. And finally, we have got an expert parallel load balancer. This one distributes the experts themselves. Some experts might be triggered more often due to the model's routing patterns. Here, the expert parallel load balancer ensures that the hotter experts, the experts that are like triggered again and again, are not on the same GPU, so it's spread across. So if you were to put together all these things, like let's take everything that we just learned and put it over a 24 hour window, how does it look? On a single H800 node, which has got eight uh, GPUs, this is one node with eight GPUs, they can sustain about 73,700 tokens per second during the pre-filling phase and 14,800 tokens during the decoding phase. Multiply that by hundreds of nodes, maximum peak usage is 278. Now you can see how they hit all those daily token counts because it's it's massive. So I'm going to give you five different points just to make sure that you understood that why this entire system works with DeepSeq R1 and their excellent inferencing system. First of all, they've got an MOE approach. An MOE approach can deliver better performance per token, but only if each expert gets enough tokens to stay busy. By distributing the experts across multiple nodes, DeepSeq R1 ensures there is a constant stream of tokens to each expert. Next one is the two phase inference. There is a pre-filling phase and then there is a decoding phase. These two phases have different computational profiles and treating them separately with specialized parallel and load balancing strategies prevents inefficiency. And the third one is communication overlap. By carefully scheduling micro batches and pipeline stages during the two phases, the pre-filling and decoding phase, DeepSeq R1 keeps the GPU computing most of the time. The system uses FP8 for matrix multiplication and dispatch, BF16, the BFloat16 for core MLA computations. This choice reflects a balance between speed because FP8 is faster and more memory efficient and numerical stability with BF16 being more precise. And this is basically how DeepSeq has managed to have like the 268 peak GPU nodes while making sure that their daily cost is just $87,000 while the ability to serve, um, you know, theoretical $560,000 worth tokens with a profit margin of 545% theoretically. This is work of an art and a lot of Western companies might be already learning from it. Let me know what you think about it. This is heavily technical, so I tried my best to make it not so technical or like at least show you the kind of system design that goes behind DeepSeq R1's inferencing system. If you have got any thoughts, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, see you in another video. Happy prompting.